Howdy. We're going to be going through the practice problems. Um, when we go through the practice problems, do note that I changed all the print lines to prints because on the test we use a lot of prints because we do everything in one line for our output. So if your answer is different because it's on multiple lines, that's perfectly fine. All right, let's go ahead and look at this. If we do numbers.add 5, our array list will hold a 5. Then we add a 4 because add adds to the back. Then 3, then 2, then 1. And if we were to print off all the numbers separated by spaces, starting from position 0, going all the way till less than 5, so that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the positions, it would print off 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all separated by spaces. All right, our next two problems. Here we do the same thing. We add everything in order. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Access the thing at position 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. The answer should be a 2. Here, we do the same thing. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Does it contain a 0? Nope. So we get the answer false. All right, let's move on. This one's going to take a little longer because i got to write words. So I add apple. I add bob. I add turtle. And then I access the word at position 3. That would be an error out of bounds. And let's see, out of bounds. Takes a while to write with the mouse, so I'm going to write OBS. Out of bounds error. Zero, one, two, there's no spot three. And again, our list is going to be Apple, Bob, Turtle in the next example. They're added in the same order. If I were to remove the thing at position zero, that would be Apple. And when you call remove, it tells you who it removed. So the list would now be Bob Turtle, and it would the list would now be Bob Turtle, and Apple would appear and get printed because that's what was at position zero. Looks like I can't do both of these on one screen. So letters dot add a. So we add A to letters, we add B to letters, we add C to letters. Start at position 1 and go less than the size. The size is 3, that means we'll access position 1, which would be... What? Oh, this is another question that... Basically, I forgot to number. So, 4, start at position 1, and we print it. We would print a B x would go to a 2, so x was a 1, it goes to a 2, 2 is less than the size which is 3, we print it, we print c, x goes to a 3, and our loop stops. What is the loop that automatically goes through every item in the list? For each. Question 7. Numbers.add 8, add 7, add integer 14, add integer 14, add 3, add 8. Sorry, add 19. <laughs> Numbers.remove whatever's at position 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. That 14 is going to go away. So part of our output is 14. Then we get a pound. Numbers.remove s. It looks for the value s. It finds it at position 2, removes it, and it'll tell us true, we were successful in our remove. Then we get a pound, and we have to print off all the numbers in the list, which would be 8, 
seven, three, 19. All right, let's go to our next question. It has a lot of text. Text takes longer to write, but that's okay. Bob, sorry, not, I was going to say Bob. <laughs> Bo, bot, box, so, mope, or mopo. Wanted to change that to mop, but I didn't. And now we're going to do rock. Go through this for loop, says go zero less than size, x plus plus. That's going to hit every item. So each time when we look at an item, we're going to say, hey, if the item at position x is less, if its length is greater than three, greater than or equal to three, remove it. This is a very interesting problem. So follow along with me. X is zero. We do not remove it. X is a one. We remove the thing at one. X goes to a two. Now this is a zero. This is a one. This is a two. Box never got looked at. So we look at the so and we're like, no, nah, we're not deleting that. X goes to a three. And we're looking at mpo. And we're like, hmm, mpo needs to go. So we cross it out. X goes to a four. Is that less than the size? Zero, sorry, one, two, three, four. Four is not less than four. We're done. So when we print off the size of our list, it is one, two, three, four things. And something important to note, all the things that are three or longer are not gone. What is the output of the following code? 8, 7, 19. We're doing a for each loop. A for each loop will access every item. It'll sort an integer x. Then we add, take the 8, we add it to t. t is now an 8. Then we go to the next item, 7. We add that to t. Now we're at 15. x goes to the next item, 19. 19 plus 15 is 34. T is now 34. And then we print 34. All right. Now we need to move on to question 10. We have bow, bot, box, So, MPO and rock. If we wanted to do the index of box, no, no, two. Box can be found at position two. If we did the same text, notice this text does not have a bat and we do index of bat, we will not find it. So we'll get a minus one. A equals B. A equals character dot two uppercase A. So A becomes the uppercase version of A, which, sorry, the uppercase version of itself, it stores a B, so it becomes the uppercase B. 13 looks kind of long. We're going to scroll down. We're in main. We add some stuff to our list. So 3, 2, 7. Then we call changer. What changer does is it says set, let's see, A is a 0, change 0, to whatever is at spot a minus 3. It's going to change it to its own value, minus 3. 
it's going to put a zero in the list. This guy, when we go on to A1, we're going to say set the one at spot A to whatever its value is, minus three, so that's negative one. And then we do this, we'll become a four. And then A is going to get too big and go out of bounds, three. Three is not less than size, so we stop. We go back to main, and when we print, we're going to print zero, comma, we'll have a bracket, because that's how the two string works, minus one, comma, four. Because when we pass an array to an object, Sorry, when we pass an array list to a method, we are passing it by reference, which means it's referencing the original object. So if we change it, it changes the original. All right. Here we have a string. It's bill. We have an integer, do. And we have data, which is an array list. We send all those things to the method. But remember, when you send strings and wrappers, they are immutable. They, Even though they are sent by reference, they behave like they're by value. So there is a local copy B. That local B changes to a 5. There is a local A. It changes to Joe. We add Joe to our list. Then we add the text version of 5 to the list. When we get back to main, A is unchanged because it's behaving like it's by value. So we get bill. B is still a 2. But our list is bracket Joe, comma, 5. Now we'll do some stuff that's a little more interesting. A, B, go to position 1 and add an M. So now an M is going to be placed between both those. Then we put a C at the end. Then we remove value 2. 0, 1, 2. The B goes away. Then we print everything in letters. Bracket, A, M, C with commas. On the test, I'm going to count off if you don't put the brackets in the commas. That's what the two string does. All right, back to our five, four, three, two, one. How many items are there? Five. That one's done. Here, we do five, four, three, two, one, remove new integer three. This is not an int, so we do the remove that looks for an object. It finds that object at position two and kills it, and it would print true. It succeeds in removing that value. What is wrong with the below code? I'm not always going to ask you, and well, first of all, the question has an error because I didn't spell error right, but we're removing location six. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you might be wondering, why is it going to try to remove location? Why doesn't it try to remove value? Because we're sending an int. When you send an int, it says remove location. If I sent an integer, it would find and kill the 6. But this is going to be an error. And again, this is going to be an out of bounds error. Out of bounds. Nineteen. I'm almost to the free coding part. Excited about that. So we do six, we do three, we do ten, add at position two a three. So right there, we're going to put in another three. Then go to spot four, zero, one, two, three, four. And a lot of you would probably think this is out of bounds, but when you do add at a location, you're allowed to use the size of the list. That's saying it goes to the very end. But if I had said go to spot five, there wouldn't that would be one past the end of the list. Sorry, two past the end of the list, and that would crash. So 
when we go to print numbers, it's going to be bracket 6, 3, 3, 10, 10, with commas separating them. All right, let's write some simple code. Now, real quick word of warning. Uh, these are, on this review, these are very simplified problems to show you how to go through an array list and how to do some very basic things. Um, the review, the question, some of the questions are a little less basic than this. So I make you do a little, do a little more, more work on the problem. But these are just to show you how to practice going through the items. So the ones on the test might have an extra step in them. All right, please write code to print all the elements in an array list named Baggins. So system.out.print, and we could write Baggins, and boom, we're done. Write code to find the average of all the values in a double array list named prices. And I'm going to do this with, I believe I did it with a for each loop on my review key. So I'm going to do it with a normal for loop this time. So find the average. So int, oh, this is a double list. So double total equals zero. Um, int count equals zero, and we're going to assume there's at least one price in the list, and uh, we'll assume there's at least one number in prices. X less than prices dot size x plus plus curly brace curly brace. Oh, I don't need a count in this one because I have the size of the list. So we're good. Um, total plus equals. I hate when it capitalizes in a word. Total plus equals prices dot get x. And I know one's a double and one's a double, which is a wrapper but it's automatically going to unwrap it and add it. So it's like, oh, I bet you wanted the primitive value, and it adds it to it, and everything's fine. So then what we do is write code to find the average of all the prices in the list. So I don't even know that I have to return anything. I didn't write have you do a method, so I should just be able to say average equals total divided by prices dot size and this would crash if prices dot size were zero because we'd be dividing by zero but we're not going to worry about that we're going to assume that there's something in the list for the test so in the list on the test you can assume that there's values in the list write code to find out how many odd numbers are in the integer array list value we're going to do this one with a for each loop well the next one we have to do with a for each loop so we'll do this one with a for loop int x equals 0, x less than values dot size x plus plus. And we're going to need a count. int odd counter equals 0, odd counter plus plus. That should be in an if. I don't know why I was starting with that. So if values dot get x values dot get x, which is one of the values in the list, modulus two, if that equal equals one, that would be an odd number, then we do odd counter plus plus. And then I didn't tell you to print it, but I'm gonna go ahead and print it. System dot out dot print. There are plus odd counter odd numbers in your list, period. All right. Write a for each loop that prints all the uppercase values in the array list, uh, array list of characters named letters. So for 
character C colon letters and the character class doesn't tell you if the current if you are a lowercase but it's used to tell you if somebody else is lowercase if character dot is lower case C so if it is a lowercase letter and I know is lowercase once a primitive but it's like oh that's a character let me turn it into a primitive value and then all we have to do is print it system dot out dot print C write code to add all the values from values 1 to values 2 for int x oh yeah I'm gonna do a for each loop for values sorry for boolean b colon values 1 for everything in values values 2 dot add b Go through every item and add it to the other list. Alright, and we are done.